Welcome back, everybody. Now, you know me. You know I like to keep things interesting. So if you've really been paying close attention, there's something about me that has changed. What could that be? I wonder. All right. So if you can make a comment on the video, hey, we shall see if you were paying attention from the previous lesson to this lesson. What did I do to myself that's different? I gotta keep you guys interested. I gotta keep you guys, you know, uh, paying attention in the video. So that's why you see me all crazy. Now, we we're in the previous video, we talked about auto configuration. That's one of the new features of IPv6. Another, not a new feature, but a newer version is ICMP version 6, which is uh, very nice. One of the things that IP, uh, IP, ICMP version 6 does. It does neighbor discovery. Remember, there's no more broadcast in IPv6. So now ICMP version 6, what it does, it goes out and actually uh, does neighbor solicitations. And then it receives neighbor acknowledgments. And with each neighbor solicitation, there's a little packet that goes with it that's called DAD, D-A-D, right? Duplicate address detection to see that there's no duplicate address on the network. And I believe early in the course I mentioned something like that, that my God, how can you have a duplicate address when you have over 15 quintillion addresses in an ICM, in a IP version six address? But either way, it, this kind of communication occurs with the use of ICMP v6. So it has a new job as well, which is neighbor discovery. And it also goes between routers or two routers. And in between routers is called router solicitation and router acknowledgments. So that's all based on multicast. There is no more broadcast. So that ARP is gone. That ARP is completely gone. Now it's all this neighbor discovery, which is great. So you can see that with IPv6 that we've been talking, it has many, many, many new features. Uh, the one we just talked about, which was auto configuration with the padding of the, e of the triple FE using the EUI-64. I mean, that's great. We don't have to worry about the interface ID. Uh, now with the new version of ICMP version six with the neighbor discovery, that ARP is no longer needed. We're actually discovering our neighbors ourselves. Uh, ICMP, I'm asking, IPv6 is the way to go. There's so many new features to include this one, all right, that you cannot want to go quick enough to IPv6 and start testing things out. So again, uh, very short lesson, very short lesson. I'm not going to get too much into the details. There's one thing I want to end this lesson with is uh, a little advice. All right. Don't go too insane when you're going through the books. Uh, those of you that are using the book that I recommended uh, that you study for the CCNA 200-120, not everything in that book is going to go to the examination and not into as that, that detail. It's a very good book. It's geared to the certification. But again, not everything is going towards it. Uh, you can read like one of, one of the things, just to make an example, just to make an example, the uh, when you're doing, let's say that that padding that we talked previously, that it, there's a UL bit in there. That once that padding gets done, it's either going to be a two or a zero because of the seventh bit if it's on or off. You don't have to worry about that math. That's not going to be on your test. All right, what's going to be on your test? Hey, do you know what a valid IPv6 address look like? Do you know what auto configuration is? Do you know? Uh, what the newest thing with ICMP version six? What is you know NS neighbor solicitation, NA neighbor advertisements, or RA or RS? All right, it's, those are the things that are going to be on the test. Some basic foundations of it. So don't go too crazy, especially in the IPv6 uh, section. They're not going to drill you that deep into it. But definitely know your stuff. The more you know, the better it is for you. But remember, your this is geared towards a certification exam and you need to keep focus on that certification exam. Now next, we're gonna get into the uh, transition mechanisms. Again, they're gonna be very quick, quick videos explaining what each one does and uh, how would you, you know, I'll probably do a lab for the dual stack
to show you, or there's already a lot done actually, I did it for you already, and show you how it's working and why would you use these transition mechanisms, all right? So remember, make a comment, what's different, what's different, and then I'll see you in the next section.